Why would you need to record your computer audio? Well, there are multiple reasons. The first one being that you need to record like a Skype call for podcasts, right? You don't want to record Skype calls, like personal Skype calls out. That would be like privacy invasions. Not that I have ever done that. YouTube videos. No, don't do that either. That might be illegal. But yeah, not that I've ever done that either. Video games. Yeah, that's a great idea. You use OBS and stuff. Well, how do you do it? I remember back in the day, whenever I had this, this old, old Macintosh. It's a vintage 2008 MacBook Pro. The thing I liked about this Mac is that it had two uh, little ports here. One's the headphones jack. The other one is the uh, line-in cable. And what I could do, I take one of these bad boys. This is a, a, a line-in cable, just a pretty short line-in cable. I stick one end into the uh, headphones port, and the other end goes into the aux cable. And then I can just record, like this. Computer audio, there I go. But then I got one of these newfangled things, like super thin, I can, it, it's like almost light as paper. But I open up the MacBook whenever I get it, and look at this, there's only, only one headphones port. I can't record computer audio. So um, I had to come up with another way to do that, and that way is called Soundflower. You might have heard of it, but today I, I will be showing you how to install it and use it to your advantage. So on your Mac, you're going to start up an internet browser, Safari, Firefox, Chrome, whatever you want, doesn't matter, because you're just going to be downloading a file from here. You're going to paste in this link, which is in the description. And you're going to go to this site right here. This is github.com. And the first thing that you're going to notice is this black header. And it's, it's terrible. I mean, why the heck did they think that that would look good? But this is not a video on critiquing github.com. We are actually going to be downloading this release it says pre-release but it works okay i haven't had a problem with it um it has a, a bit of a readme here you just say you just see that uh dude 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 it kind of shows you how to use soundflower but i'm going to show you in a minute so just click on soundflower dash 2.0 b dot 2.dmg and you will be good. It's, you're gonna show up with this apple, this uh, this disk image. It's got a a license.txt. It's uh, MIT license, open source. That's what I'm talking about. You got a README, kind of same stuff as the README in the on the website. Okay. You have this uninstall soundflower dot script thing, and um, that's not what it looks like. Uh, it it's basically uninstalling a bunch of it's removing a bunch of files that Soundflower installs. But this is what you're gonna be looking at. You're gonna get this dialog right here. It says it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. It's okay. You can trust this. You're gonna right click on it, and then click open, and then voila, you've got this open button here. And then you'll go through the steps necessary, but I have already installed Soundflower, so I don't need this at all. The next thing you're going to do after you install Soundflower is you're going to open up this little application called Audio MIDI Setup. And with this little utility that is built into your Mac, you have the ability to make uh, multi-output devices and aggregate devices. And, and uh, I'll show you what this is in a minute. Actually, I will show you right now. So you're going to go here to this plus symbol, and you're going to click Create Multi-Output Device. You have built-in output automatically selected, and you want to select Soundflower 2-channel. Now what this will do is it'll send one signal to built-in output, which 
it's usually your headphones or your built-in speakers, depending on if you have headphones plugged in. It's also going to send to Soundflower. But it's not doing it right now, because what you have to do is you have to right-click and say, use this device for sound output. I'm going to rename it to Soundflowers, and after I do that, I can go to the, sa the sound menu bar, which I have turned on via the system preferences, and then I can just click on Soundflower, and all output would be going to both headphones and Soundflower. So now whenever you're recording some computer auto, you can hear it, and it will be going to the Soundflower device. So, that's great and all, but uh, you can't record your voice. So, like, if you're recording a Skype call or a podcast, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to create another device here. This time, you're going to create an aggregate device. And here, you're going to have to add in all of your microphones and other devices that you're going to use. So, I want Soundflower. That is what the uh, the computer audio. Uh, and I also want H2 audio in because that's my microphone that I'm using. Once you add all your devices, you're good to go. Go into QuickTime, create a new audio recording, select aggregate device. And you can rename this as well if you want to. And then just hit record. What QuickTime Player is going to do is it's going to record to this M4A file that has four channels. And whenever you upload it to, or if you put it into GarageBand, it'll look like two channels. And you're not going to hear the computer audio or vocals based on uh, what those second, like the the final two, the third and the fourth channel are going to be. But if you put it in Audacity, Audacity likes to split those channels up into multiple tracks and then you can export it as a, as like a, a single audio file. One more thing before I leave, and that is recording your computer audio and your vocals, which also voice, that's what I mean when I say vocals, uh, to OBS, op Open Broadcasting Software. Now, this is a great screen capture program and streaming program. It, it's just phenomenal because you can add so many different things. Like, you can add in uh, displays, captures. You can add in audio inputs. You can add in a bunch of different things, all of these, like uh, game capture, uh scene, I don't know what that is, uh, text, video capture, so like if you have a webcam, uh, different stuff. But what you're going to do here is, uh, well I already have it done here, but you're going to click audio input capture, and create a new, and you're going to select the default, or you're going to select your device Soundflower. Aggregate device? No. Soundflower. Click OK. Um, you can rename this. I'm going to rename this to Computer Audio. Yep. There you go. That's how you record computer audio.